idea of the kind of DNA in space. And it is a fascinating thing that you see this uh, fractal, this repeated pattern yes. in nature. And the, un the electric universe is a fractal universe because, as we said early, earlier, the um, plasma phenomena are scalable over an enormous range of sizes. So you can expect to see the same kinds of things from the laboratory up to uh, the galactic. That's fascinating to me. And, and it, I mean, have you done any biological uh, research in this as well, in terms of looking at the human body, for instance, as an electrical machine? In that sense, pretty much, if indeed we are driven by the same uh, uh, rules and laws uh, in, in one way. What do you think? Yes, yeah. uh, yes there is a, a pattern there. Um, in my research into the nature of gravity, I came to uh, the work by that fellow that I mentioned earlier who had uh, given a simple explanation in terms of uh, real objects as to how gravity might work. And he said that every subatomic particle is made up of smaller charged bits, if you like. Mm. He called them uh, subtrons. It doesn't matter what you call them. If you can imagine that the electron, the proton, and the neutron are actually made up of smaller charged bits orbiting within the classical radius of that particle, then you have an object which is uh, malleable. It can be it can be pushed out of shape. It can be a football shape. It can be spherical. Uh, and it can be squished, you know, squashed flat in one direction. <laughs> And by just those simple deformations, he showed that uh, you can explain magnetism and gravity. So as one simple concept, uh, the explanations just sort of fall out of it. Hmm. But the interesting thing is that if you are going to have uh, the electron, for instance, which is uh, probably the, uh, it's much, much smaller than the, um, the proton and the neutron, if you say that that is made up of smaller particles orbiting within that classical radius of the electron, then it turns out just by simple calculation that those particles must be traveling far in excess of the speed of light. Mm. He calculated that if you could release those particles to move in a straight line, they would travel from here to the other side of the Andromeda galaxy in one second. <laughs> now, this gives you a clue. <laughs> <laughs> It means that the electric force itself operates throughout the universe at near infinite speed. It means that in the electric universe, everything is connected. And this gets you to the idea of the interconnectedness of all things and also the fact that the electric signaling that occurs operates uh, near instantaneously. And one of the puzzles that I always had was that... Uh, for instance, if you have a, um, a tennis player returning a serve, if you relied on signals travelling along the nerves at a few metres a second, then you would never be able to return the ball. You know, your re reflexes, your actions would be far too slow. <laughs> it just couldn't be done. The human body seems to act as a unit. In other words, the mind, the body, everything is connected. And the signaling between the various components in the body seems to operate far in excess of uh, nerve speed signaling. And according to this uh, model that I'm proposing, it actually occurs at near infinite speed. There is another a benefit of that, and that is it means that uh, atoms that are assembled into a complex molecule will do a beautiful resonant dance, which means that it, it has a signal, if you like, which is available to the universe and other molecules of the same construction will all sing the same tune. It'll be like a symphony all playing at once, but uh, apparently uh, the uh, communication is perfect. However, it wouldn't be perfect if one object was moving away from another and the uh, signals travelled at the speed of light. To be coherent and to be consistent the signals must travel at near infinite speed, otherwise they detune by you know, the Doppler effect. But according to this new model, they do not detune. The signaling remains perfect, even if they are traveling relative to one another. So, for instance, if uh, there is such a thing as um, uh, ESP and so on, 
it does it doesn't get detuned if one person's flying in an aircraft and the other one's stationary on the ground. Huh. That's the a, other thing is that's incredible. The other thing is, and it should have been obvious to astronomers long ago. It was pointed out by uh, the late Tom Van Flanden, the astronomer, uh, that gravity itself operates at near infinite speed, far in excess of the speed of light. In other words, the Earth knows, if you like to put it in those terms, where the sun is right now, mm. not where it was eight and a half minutes ago, and the same for all the other planets in the solar system. If that wasn't so, uh, you would have a, a torque acting on the planets which would sling them out of the solar system in a very short space of time. You would have no solar system. And yet this doesn't, this obvious point doesn't seem to have um, got through to anyone. Oh, the other, the, the, the most disturbing thing of all for physicists is that uh, this means that Einstein's theories, his postulates were wrong. Yeah. And in fact, they were somewhat illogical. And this is why people have such trouble in trying to understand what it was that Einstein's theories were trying to say. Now, the simple fact is they don't make sense. <laughs> and those those who've tried to make sense out of them, you know, go around and round in circles and finally say, oh, well, other people believe in it, so it must be right. Mm. Well, but that's... if we can get, you know, get rid of this business of worshipping the scientists of the past, uh, I think we would go an awful, or we'd uh, science would progress much faster. It's like Newton said, uh, he... Um, he has seen far by standing on the shoulders of giants, but the problem is to pick the right giant and make sure they're facing the right direction. <laughs> that's right. That's a very good point. I mean, that's a, that's just uh, that's incredibly fascinating to me as well in terms of the both the fractal uh, properties that you that you mentioned here in terms of the electrical universe, but also then how that actually would explain, uh, if you will, then a lot of so-called paranormal. I mean, they're only paranormal because we don't, you know, understand them yet. These phenomena, which uh, ha has to do with the interconnectedness of, of um, you know, either human beings or, or uh, yes. you know, up to the uh, up, upper level of this in terms of planetary bodies and things like that as well. And um, yep. even, even the grand spiral galaxies would not be grand spirals if uh, gravity operated at the speed of light, which is a real snail's pace in the universe. It's a terribly yes. slow. Yes. Uh, ha haven't they been able to, I don't know if you know this, but uh, I mean, they, they had the, they had this rule or law there that nothing can you know go faster than the speed of light. But as far yeah. as I remember, they, they even had experiments here, here on uh, Earth where they've actually managed to speed up um, the, the, speed, the speed of light, so to speak, or increase the speed of mm. light. Uh, do you know anything? They always explain, yeah, they always explain that away as being a, a phase, uh, a, a, the um, speed of a wave. It, it's the phase of the wave that uh, travels faster than the speed of light. But really, it's uh, the electromagnetic wave does travel at the speed of light simply because it's uh, a disturbance traveling through a medium. It's like um, a uh, stone dropped into a pond. The waves move. Uh, slowly away from where the stone was dropped, and that is, in effect, your speed of light. The speed of gravity is the speed of the, if you like, just as a kind of a, a, a simile, is um, is equivalent to the speed of sound through water. In other words, it's travelling far faster mm. than this uh, slow transverse disturbance. And electromagnetic waves are a transverse disturbance in a medium. You cannot transfer an electromagnetic wave through nothing. It must have a medium, which is what Maxwell said, but it was discarded by Einstein with no explanation as to how uh, the electromagnetic wave was supposed to proceed. Hmm. You must, if you're going to have an electric field in space, it's got to have a charged particle as its um, uh, origin, point of origin. You can't just sort of conjure it up and say that it exists in nothing. W would do we get any closer to the uh, the mysteries of the origins of of our universe, or at least uh, the the matter or energy within or electricity than within our universe, if we look at it from the point of view of the electric uh, universe? Uh, that's a good question. Um, what we can see, uh, Halton Arp, by the way, the astronomer, uh, was the one who showed that redshift is related to the age more than it is to distance or the speed of recession. And based on his work, he came to the conclusion that the universe is much smaller than we think. 
and uh, that we cannot see all that far anyway. Uh, <laughs>